Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the first type of chemical bonding known as ionic bonding. So now that we've finished talking about ions, talking about how some atoms or some atoms are looking to lose their electrons, we're going to talk about where those electrons go in the case for a metal, and for the case of nonmetals, those who want to gain electrons, where are those electrons coming from? to be able to make both of them uh, happy, all right? Um, and so what we're gonna do here is talk about chemical bonding. And I, I actually, again, going with the idea that I like to personify things, add uh, human natures to these things, uh, it's a chemical bond. So we're building a relationship, all right? We're trying to build a relationship between two atoms um, to work together uh, to make everyone happy, to get that full outer energy level. All right. And when atoms work, and when elements work together, when atoms work together to form that chemical bond, that relationship, all right, their properties change. All right. The classic example is if you take sodium, which is an ex, kind of an explosive metal, all right, and you take chlorine, which is a poisonous gas, and you combine them together and they form a chemical relationship, a chemical bond, and they work, they come together, no longer separate, but they are together. They form sodium chloride, which is table salt, all right, which is delicious. It changes its properties. It's no longer explosive metal. It's no longer a poisonous gas, but it's something different. So uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit about what an ionic bond is, and I'm going to do uh, a couple examples, um, and it should be pretty straightforward. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. So first let's talk about what is an ionic bond. All right, an ionic bond is a bond or a chemical bond between a metal and a nonmetal, right? Between a metal and a nonmetal. So, what do we know about metals and nonmetals? All right. First of all, we're talking about gaining or losing electrons. To do this, they are forming ions, and we know that metals typically form cations. All right. And we know that nonmetals, which means they're looking to lose their electrons, nonmetals are always looking to gain their electrons. And thus are forming anions. All right. So another way to say this: this is a chemical bond between a cation and an anion. All right. So we have to think about what we know here. So let's start with this first example here. We're going to do calcium and fluorine. We're going to talk about how they, what we know about them, and then what we, what they can do to work together to make everyone happy. All right. So let's start with: uh, we know calcium is a metal. All right. Is a metal in the periodic table is to the left of that big black staircase, all right, and underneath hydrogen. And we know fluorine because it's to the right of the staircase on the periodic table that is a nonmetal. So we know that we have one that's looking to lose electrons and one that's looking to gain electrons. All right, let's start with the Lewis dot structure. All right, calcium has two valence electrons to start. Fluorine has seven valence electrons being in group 7A. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Now I'm going to kind of, I'm kind of model my approach to how I would do this here. All right. First thing we got to think about when we go back to an ion is what do each one of these things want to do? All right. He's got two valence electrons. Right. So they're looking to lose two electrons. Oops. All right. Looking to lose two electrons. While she over here, fluorine, all right, has seven valence electrons, so it's looking to gain an electron, but just one. All right, so now the question is, how can we make everyone happy here? All right, well, if he's looking to lose an electron, and they're looking to gain an electron, I'm sure we can make some sort of agreement where they, with the electron they give up, they can gain, and that's exactly what happens. This electron's gonna go over here, To that fluorine, that fluorine has now gained this electron here. It's lost this electron, and the fluorine's gained it. Fluorine is now very happy. Fluorine has its eight electrons, all right? It's gained one electron, so now this fluorine is a minus one anion. More specifically, that fluorine is happy. He's good. This calcium, though, is not because he wants to lose two and he's only lost one so far. All right, he wants to get rid of that one as well. 
So we can't add, we already need enough, we're gonna need extra help. We're gonna have to bring in another atom. It's gonna not just gonna be one to one, we're gonna have to have a you know a multiple atom relationship here. All right. We're talking just about calcium and fluorine. I'm not gonna bring in another calcium. I already have unhappy calcium, all right? But I have a happy fluorine, so I bet if I brought in another fluorine, if I brought in another fluorine with its seven valence electrons, I bet this calcium could also make this one happy. So the electron will go from here. He is going to give his electron, the metal gives, it, gives his electron. Fluorine gains that, that fluorine gains a, an eighth electron. That loses that one. So now let's check if everyone's happy. He's lost two, gained one, gained one. Everyone is happy. All right, this fluoron formed another negative one ion. Calcium has lost two. And thus has formed a plus two cation. All right. When we're forming what we call an ionic compound, which is what we're about to do here, or what we're doing right here, we need it to be an overall neutral charge. All right. So we have a plus two, a minus one, and a minus one. Plus two, minus one, minus one altogether equals zero. Positive two. Right, just thinking it out. Positive two, negative one, negative one. Right? That's a positive two and a negative two. That together makes zero. That's called a neutral or a neutral compound. And that's what we're looking to do. So in this case here, it took one calcium and two fluorines. So our, our new chemical formula would be C A F. And then two goes down there. That two represents how many fluorines there were. Now, technically, there's a number one right here. All right? Mix that calcium. But if there's a one, you do not need to draw the number one. Only if it's more than one do you have to write it. So that's a one calcium, two fluorine creates calcium fluoride. That's our compound there. All right? So we have our metal, our non-metal. Again, plus two, minus one, minus one. That equals net of zero. All right, let's try the second one. Um, and then you guys will have lots of time to do your own practice. All right, so we have sodium here, which is a metal. We have phosphorus, which is a non-metal. All right, sodium. All right, has one valence electron. Phosphorus has five valence electrons. All right. You should be having your notebook out. All right. You just, once you've set this up, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pause it for a second here. All right. You pause your video. I want you to try it. I want to see if you can do it. All right. If you can, it'd be great. We can go back and we can fix it. If you're not sure, maybe try in pencil just in case. All right. If you're not sure, then I'm obviously going to go over it. All right. Pause it though for a second. Try it on your own. Okay, hopefully you've tried it and you started me back up. All right, let's walk through this. I'm going to go a little bit faster because we've done this once already. All right, sodium. Think about what each one wants. Sodium wants to lose one electron. All right, because that is one valence electron. Phosphorus has five, so it's looking to gain three. Right? So looking to gain three electrons. All right. So the metal is always looking to lose. He's going to give up his electron. He'll give up that electron. All right. He'll give up that electron to so or to fluorine. That fluorine's gained an electron. He's lost his electron. That sodium is now happy. He has formed a sodium plus one cation, he's good, all right? But fluorine 
still has one, two, three, four, five, six. He's still not happy. He needs to gain two more. I don't want to bring in another phosphorus that's unhappy. I already have one that's one unhappy. Why would I bring another unhappy one? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, have to this guy needs to gain more, which means we're going to need multiple uh, sodiums here to make this happen. So I'm going to bring in another sodium. He will give up his electron. All right. That sodium is now happy because that sodium is now happy. He's formed a sodium plus one cation. Fluorine is still not happy yet. So we're going to have to do one more. I'm actually going to do it all the way over here. He's going to give up his electron. He forms. All right. Now fluorine has, now this phosphorus has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Lost one, lost one, lost one. Everyone's happy. This phosphorus has gained three electrons and formed a minus three anion. All right. And it's that positive and negative charges that are causing them to stick together. All right. Positive negatives or positive negative attract to one another. So all these positive charges, almost kind of like a magnet, are sticking to the sides of that phosphorus. It took me three sodiums for that one phosphorus. All right. So when we put our compound name, the metal always goes first. Notice the metal went first. The metal always goes first. So then we have Na, which I have one, two, three, phosphorus. There's one, but I don't have to write one if it's not there. We just assume it is. All right? That is sodium phosphide. All right? So there's a little bit about ionic bonding talking about Metals and nonmetals giving up electrons, forming an ionic comp. This is what we call an ionic compound. Making sure everyone's happy. You should check at the end. It should be a neutral zero. All right, plus one, plus one, plus one, and minus three. All right, that should equal zero. All right, and in the end, that positive and negative charge causes and tracks and pulls them together. All right, those are a couple examples. There's going to be a lot more examples coming your way, but this video is getting kind of long, so let's going to stop it here. All right. Thank you for watching. Uh, good luck, and may the science be with you.